Welcome to Global Kids Ministry under the leadership of Youth Pastor Carrie Royal online every Sunday live at 12 noon. This exciting, creative, and interactive ministry fellowships at Kingdom Faith Global Ministries under senior pastors, Pastors Andre and Kim Sanders, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 18240 Southwest 110th Avenue. Every fourth Sunday is Youth Sunday. All are welcome. Come and be blessed. Good afternoon, Global Kids. We're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. And we'd like to begin by saying hallelujah to our Father. Hallelujah, Father, for being such a wonderful Father. Hallelujah for being such a peaceful Father. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We say hallelujah to your name because you're great. We say hallelujah to your name because you give us great people in our lives. We thank you for being such an awesome teacher. We thank you for loving us and teaching us and showing us what we need to do to be effective on this earth. We say hallelujah because you're ordering our steps. You're showing us the right way to live and you're just amazing. Thank you, Father. You are great. You're such a marvelous Father that we look to you for our everyday love, everyday awesomeness. We thank you for saying great things about us, Lord. We thank you for showing us the great things that are afforded to us as your kingdom citizens. Hallelujah to your name, Lord, because you are awesome. Hallelujah to your name, Lord, because you're training us to be ambassadors on this earth. Lord, you are great. And we ask that you continue to lead us, guide us, love us, train us, and bring great people in our lives. That way we can fellowship together, learn from one another, and just be effective on this earth. Lord, you are great. You are amazing. We thank you for just teaching us and being in the midst of our homes. You are our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. Lord, you are amazing. You are so great. Thank you for your precious word that we're getting ready to hear on this awesome Sunday afternoon. We love you. We praise you. We think you're amazing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah for just being in the midst of our lives. Thank you for touching those people that are around us, teaching them, showing them, loving them, that, and then showing them that you're great. You're such an amazing father. Thank you for giving us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah for our daily bread. Thank you for being such a great king. Thank you for being such a great father. Hallelujah to who you are. Thank you for being in the midst of all of our actions, just covering us in the blood of Jesus. We welcome you into our environments. We welcome you to our homes. We welcome you into our activities. We welcome you into the schools that we go to. We welcome you into the houses of our family members, our friends, so that they can learn what an amazing place it is to be under your covering, for you to be watching over us. In Jesus' precious name we pray, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 we love you. Amen. Hello everybody, this is Youth Pastor Carrie Royal from Kingdom Faith Global Ministries and we are here for another Kingdom Study Lesson. So welcome back Global Kids and all you viewers out there. Today we are going to be discussing a call to order. And the Bible basis, it comes from Genesis chapters 27 through 31. It's actually about the story of Laban and Jacob. But when you think about a call to order, I normally think about a courtroom. What about you? And when things are getting out of control, what does the judge normally say? 
he bangs his gavel and he says, order in the courts, order in the courtroom, right? Because everything needs to be done in order, even the kingdom of God. That's why the word says, do everything in decency and order. And the Holy Spirit is giving us a call to order. There's a lot going on in the world today, a whole lot going on in this world today, and it's bringing division in the church. Listen to what the word has to say about it. We're going to be in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. It says, you should know this, Timothy. This was Paul speaking to Timothy. He said that in the last days, there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. So yes, the Holy Spirit is giving us a call to order. As the scripture stated in 2 Timothy 3, we're going to have some difficult times. But we have to learn to do everything in decency and order. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit. We have to be able to stay in line, right alignment with the kingdom of God. See, the Satan, he has great power. But people can be delivered from his reign of spiritual darkness because of Jesus' victory on the cross. So we have victory in Jesus. To overcome Satan, there are three points, three things that we really need to do. The first one would be to stay faithful to God's word. Second... Have a determination to stay away from sin. That's going to help you stay faithful. And number three, it's good to have support of other believers. Because we help build one another up. And as we stay connected to the right source, the kingdom of God, and stay connected to one another, we build one another up instead of tearing each other down. We can be an example to one another and to others out there in the world as well. But we can make it together. So... We need to break this lesson up into three topics. Before we do, we're going to read a memory verse. The memory verse today is coming from John chapter 12, verse 24. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Because it's not about us. It's about staying in right alignment with the kingdom of God. Doing the right things. So we have to let the flesh die. And we have to do what is right. But the topics today are going to be. A form of godliness. Cheaters never win. And stay faithful to the call. So as we get into our first topic. A form of godliness. Let's really break down what that means. Because a form of godliness is not a good thing. It is not godliness. See, a form of godliness is when people may, someone may seem right, may seem godly, but they're not really following the ways of God. They're not really admitting you, uh, that God is not their God. So it's a form. They try, they, they are trying to make it seem like they're right, but they're not really right. So it's not a good thing. And the story in our Bible basis, as I said, is about Laban and Jacob. Now, one of them was trying to live right by doing the right thing. And the other, he just did what he wanted to do. He had his own best interests at heart. While Jacob was trying to do what God wanted him to do. So I kind of gave it away. Laban was the one mo motivated by selfish motives. And Jacob follow God's standards he was unaware uh, that Jacob was unaware that Laban was so deceptive but he wound up becoming his father-in-law see what happened was let's go to the beginning of the story before he married his wife in this story he was cheated out of seven years of his life because he wanted to marry Laban's daughter he was in love with Laban's daughter named Rachel so he said how can I marry your daughter Rachel? He said, if you work for me for seven years, I'll let you marry Rachel. Now, 
After seven years, Laban sent his other daughter Leah into Jacob's tent in the dark. So he was unaware that it was not Rachel. So what happened was, after a while, when he found out, he was very upset. And he said, why would you do this to me? But at this point, he was stuck. So now he said, I still want your daughter, Rachel. What can I do to have your daughter, Rachel? He said, Laban said, you have to work seven more years to get Rachel. So because he really loved Rachel, that's what he did. Now, <laughs> see Laban's problem was he had a form of godliness. Even though before Jacob found out all about his deceptive ways, he thought that Laban was a good man and did what was right and he trusted Laban. And he did not know that he was gonna cheat him out of those years of his life. He even, he even took it even farther than that. It's a great story, but the whole story you can find in chapters 27 through 31 in Genesis. So read it, global kids. <laughs> but when you do wrong things, you need to watch out because it's going to come back to you. Raymond, that's what Laban didn't realize. He did not realize that what goes around comes around. And the Bible says that. So be watchful because everything was all good for Laban while Jacob was working for him and his flocks was progressing and he was being blessed. See, but when Jacob wanted to leave, that's when things took a turn. So, like I said, I'm not going to give the end of the way. I really want you to go read that. But there was another twist to this story. And there was so much cheating and deception going on in this story that you had to really wonder who was following God. Because even in the beginning of this story, Jacob did some dishonest things himself. How can we be a light? How can we be an example well, we're really being led by the wrong motives. Like our memory verse says, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It's not about us. We have to let the flesh die daily so that we can be a light, so that we can be an example. If you saw the picture behind our title and our memory verse, it had some, in fact, I'm going to pull it back up for you. It has some light bulbs there. Now, the ones that are lit have little lines coming from them. They're glowing. The others are not lit. See, the ones that are not lit, they are a form of godliness. They look just like the other light bulbs, but there's no light. There's, they are not being an example because they are not connected to the right source. When you stay connected to God, remember those three points that I gave you. When you stay connected to the source, you are going to bear the right fruit. You'll be that example. Your light will shine. So you have to be watchful. Even in the other scriptures that I read to you about how people are unforgiving and they, they want to do things for themselves and they're not loving and all that. And stay away from those kinds of people because it's a form of godliness. Someone can seem like the best of per of someone can seem like the best person. But if they're not motivated and being led by the Holy Spirit, if it's not God, if they are not serving the king, it is only a form of. It is not true godliness. Do not be deceived. Jacob was tricked out of seven years of his life and so much more. And, and as I was talking, I was saying that even Jacob, when he first started, he dealt in some trickery and some deceit himself. He cheated his brother out of his inheritance. Jacob was not supposed to be the one who inherited, but he he got the he tricked his father into thinking that he was his brother Esau. And he tricked him and cheated him. He cheated his brother out of his inheritance. See, what goes around comes around. And Laban got his back too. 
But always remember, try and do what's right. So, you know what? You have to set a standard to make a difference. You have to set a standard for the kingdom of God. Remember I said you have to be determined not to follow the sin. Cheating always comes back around. Evil always comes back around. Whatever you plant is what you're going to harvest. So if it's not good, you don't want that coming back to you. Do what is right so that God will bless you. God will have your back. If it's not good, it's not good for you. Stay away from people like that because they're going to push you to do some wrong things. Look, even Jacob, who deceived his brother, guess who he'd received instruction from to do that? His own mother. I'm not saying your parents are telling you to do the wrong thing. Don't say, Pastor Carrie said, watch your parent. I am saying you can't trust everybody you think you can trust. They will think they're doing the right thing for you. But in the end, it's going to cause you misery in the, in the end. So, Jacob had to suffer some things because he made some wrong decisions. We may not always suffer for it immediately. But what goes around comes around. And what's done in the dark will always be brought to the light. Now, if you find yourself placing more importance on things above what God wants for you, above God's will, you have to start saying, what is my motive here? Why am I doing this? What am I being led by? Because Laban and cheaters, they're led by wrong motives. He was led by either, he was led by selfishness. And some people don't even cheat for themselves. Well, they don't think it's for themselves. But in the end, it really is because you want to be liked by your friends. Because you want to be a people pleaser. And that's the wrong one to try to please. You're supposed to be trying to please God. Because God is the one who can elevate or bring you back down. If we're placing more importance on things and placing it above our call to order as a kingdom citizen, you're taking the wrong action. The Holy Spirit is saying, order in the courts. Let's be that example and do and live right. We are, he is calling us to right living. When your actions show you that something else is more important than pleasing God, it has become an idol. And that's what was going on with Laban. See, Jacob, he turned that thing around. When he left his native land and he ran and he fleed because he tricked, cheated his brother. He made a change. He repented. And he started following the right path. But Laban... He continued and continued and continued and so ch continued to cheat and deceive. And that's where Laban was. But listen to this scripture in 2 Timothy 3.13. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Laban was a cheater and a manipulator for his own benefit. See, that's what he thought about. Whatever would benefit him. It doesn't matter, didn't matter who he had to cheat to get it. And as the scripture says, that thing grows. So it probably started small. But as you continue to do something, continue to do something, it grows. He had to start somewhere because everything starts as a seed. And as it started as a seed, it's when, when you nurture and water that seed, it grows. And that bad behavior just grows out of control the more you give it life. He was giving it life. And when you do bad things, you are giving that seed life. So what you want to do, you need to check those things. Get them under check. Get them in check. And say, I will not 
Be determined. Have that determination not to follow sin, not to follow the wrong example, but to be the good example. And when you know people like that, it's not for you to befriend people by letting them pull you into their deceptive behaviors. It is not acceptable in God's eyes. It is not kingdom living. And it is out of order. The Holy Spirit is saying, order in the court. It's time to move from you where you are and to grow. We need to be able to stay faithful to God's word. Be determined to stay away from sin. And have be supported. Stay in support of each other to help one another grow to be example to be a light we don't want to have a form of godliness we want to have godliness right right all right because guess what it is review time we are reviewing part one a form of godliness and in this section we are going to be doing multiple choice we have three questions and give me the best answer. Now, number one, what is a form of godliness? A, is it someone who seems right but does not serve God? B, someone who seems right and serves God? C, someone who doesn't seem right but serves God? Or D, someone who doesn't seem right and doesn't serve God? Place A, B, C, or D into the comments and I will know that you are ready. Great job. It is A, someone who seems right but does not serve God. So don't be deceived. Do not be tricked because the Holy Spirit is going to lead you. All right. The Holy Spirit always reveals. Number two, what do we need to overcome Satan? What do we need to overcome Satan? A, faithfulness to God's word. B, determination to stay away from sin. And C, support of other believers. Or D, all of the above. Thank you, Global Kids and everybody. You are absolutely correct. It is D, all of the above. Wonderful, great job. This is the final question for this section, which is not faithfulness to God's word. Please give me all that are correct. You may have more than one answer. A, love, B, giving. C, cheating. D, selfishness, which is not faithfulness to God's word. I can't fool you. Thank you. Thank you. C and D. Cheating and selfishness is not according to God's word. They both work against love. They both work against love. All right. We are moving into part two. Cheaters never win. Do you believe that? Because if you believe that, you wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> you wouldn't do it. Now see, there are different forms of cheating. Cheating doesn't have to be all about, you know, cheating someone out their money or their homes. There are, pay there are strong cases where people have cheated elderly out of their life savings. Isn't that awful? But think about it, because sometimes it seems like they do they do win, right? Like when you have a school assignment and you don't get caught for plagiarizing or for copying off of someone's paper. See, but the thing is, cheaters may win the battle, but never the war. They may win the battle, but never the war. It may look like they got away for a minute, but after a while... God is going to fix that thing in the end. Just like he did for Laban. Just like what happened to Jacob. It comes back around. But that just means they get away with it for a little while. Not forever. So. What we have to remember is God is always going to look out for his children. He's always going to look out for his children. He looks out for the little man. He is the judge. Order in the court. He is judge. Order in the court. Okay. So 
That's why we have to be on the winning team. We have to be on the winning team. We want our light to shine because in the end, it's going to be about his will. Who has allowed themselves to be transformed and turned from their old ways? You might be used to showing your answers in class or on a, cheating on a test and saying, it, it ain't nothing, it's no big deal. But if it's not faithfulness to God's word or if it's not determination to stay away from sin, it is not in the will of God. If it's not good, it is not good for you. Don't say it's just, you know, it does, it's not doing anybody any harm. Cheating is cheating. That's why you ha you know you have to always think about what would Jesus do? WWJD, what would Jesus do? We must we must stay in right alignment with the kingdom of God by following Jesus' example. He would never cheat an anybody out of anything. He would never cheat anybody out of anything. And cheating is just one example of these evil desires and evil things that the flesh does. It's just one example, but use this as, use this as, you know, as an example of your lifestyle altogether, period. Don't just say, I don't cheat, I'm good. Do you lie? Do you, do you, what is it that you do? I'm not going to sit here and name every single thing. Let the Holy Spirit convict you. What comes to your mind? That's what the Holy Spirit is saying you need to stop doing. Because I, there's a whole list. So Jacob, he realized that he had to stay faithful. And that's what he did. He turned that thing around. He turned it. He stayed faithful. And God did the rest. Listen to Genesis chapter 31 verses 3 through 6. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your father and grandfather and to your relatives there, and I will be with you. I will be with you. So Jacob called Rachel and Leah, both, his, uh, both of Laban's daughters, because now he was married to both, out of the field where he was watching his flock. And he said to them, I have noticed that your father's attitude toward me has changed. But the God of my father has been with me. You know how hard I have worked for your father. Seven through nine continues, but he has cheated me, changing my wages 10 times. So even though he cheated him out of seven years, he was still cheating him even more out of his wages when he worked for him. But God has not allowed him to do me any harm. God has not allowed him for he said, the speckled animals will be your wages. Then the whole flock began to produce speckled young. And then when he changed his mind and said, the striped animals will be your wages. Then the whole flock produced striped young. Look at God. In this way, God has taken your father's animals and given them to me. Woo. When God fights your battles, you will never lose. That's why I say cheaters never win. It might look like they're prospering for a minute, for a season. But in the end, God is going to turn that thing around. So you have to stay faithful to the word of God, to God's word. Has stay faithful to the kingdom of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Be that example, be that light. And now we build other believers. You may think that, they may think that they're getting away with something for a minute. But they're not. God sees and knows all. He knows all. And there's always a penalty. There was always a penalty. Because because one of his jobs is to be our judge. He is our judge. And the judge has to keep order. So he sends his Holy Spirit to get everything in order. And those who don't fall in line with that order. There are consequences. Just like in a courtroom with a regular judge and a court of law. When someone sins against the law in the United States or wherever, there's a penalty. They go to, they go to jail. So cheaters never win. 
Cheaters never win. Just recently, there was a situation I had. I'm going to share my testimony with you all. I, I Because I, I felt like I was cheated. And it seems like every time the Holy Spirit leads me to speak about something, I get tested in that area. <laughs> but just here recently, I bought a car. And I made a deal with the owner for a certain amount, which was lower than the price on the car. Now, when I came back with the money, well, I only paid a portion and then we did a loan for the rest. So he said, okay, your payments are going to be a little slightly lower than what we had planned on because I said, oh, great, great, great. So I signed the paperwork and I got out of there. But then when I went to the DMV to get my tags and titles and all that kind of stuff, I'm going through the paperwork again. And I noticed that the loan amount was the same amount as the price of the car before it was reduced. So I'm like, hold, hold up, what's going on? Why is that amount not different after the, the, the guy said he would give it to me for a certain price? So what happened was he didn't change the amount, just my payments went down. So I called him and I said, you promised me the car for this amount but you did the paperwork for this amount. And he said, no, that was just if you were paying all cash. That was an all cash deal. I said, that's not what you said. I was getting a little frustrated, but I had to remember. Kids, that spirit said, Kim, keep your calm. So I did. I spoke to the man nice and calmly because he was trying to tell me something that was. How, how many people get frustrated when somebody's sitting there and just lie to your face? You know what you discussed. And then you're sitting there like, that's not what you said. So I said, sir, we never discussed an all cash deal. I said, I have a witness. I said, I brought my sister with me. And I said, if you recall, he said, you have a witness. I said, yeah. I said, if you recall, remember, she said to you, my sister bought her car from here and I bought my car from here. And we brought her here because you're a really good businessman and all this stuff, blase, blase, blase. He said, all right, all right, we'll figure this out. We'll figure it out. So I'm like, well, how are we going to figure it out? What are we going to do? <laughs> so what he did was, I'm free of car payments for the next couple months. I don't have to pay anything. I'm driving around in a car without paying for it. My payments don't start until later. And I was like, thank you, God, because God will fight for you. He was like, well, you already, because at first he was trying to say, you already signed the paperwork. And I'm like, oh, no, no. But I had prayed before I called that man. But see, she does never win. But God will fight for you just like he did for Jacob. Every time Jacob, when, you know, Laban changed Jacob wages, he said, fine, you'll get the speckled cows. God changed them all to speckled. Every time he said, no, I changed my mind. You're going to get the striped cows. God changed them all to striped. God will fight for you. And there's nothing that anybody can do about it when God is in control. That's what God will do. There's a scripture that many people refer to when they're talking about the Lord's return. And yes, it relates to the Lord's return, but it relates to so much more because God returns every day. He is here every day to show up for you. And people will be caught in their mess when they least expect it. Listen to this. It's from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. You don't think you got away with something, but you ain't get away with nothing because judgment is still coming. And see, God don't like ugly. Evil sin is ugly. That's why he says, repent, turn from your wicked ways. Just like Jacob turned, it's never too late to turn. And J God started fighting for Jacob because he became faithful, faithful, faithful to the, to the kingdom of God. So now Jacob might have started out cheating and, and deceiving. He was a cheater. He was a cheat. 
He deceived his father and cheated his brother out of his inheritance. But he was a cheat. But guess what? He changed. That thing in him, that seed in him died. And he became faithful to the kingdom of God. And now his story is told to build and make other believers in the kingdom of God. And that's the same thing that God wants to do through us. It's never too late to turn. Turn those things around. What go, Because what goes around comes around. You never know when things are going to turn around. Laban didn't expect it. But everything that we do in secret will be brought to the light. Because God is light and the light reveals everything hidden. Listen to this scripture as well. Luke 8, 17. For all that is secret will eventually be brought into the open and everything that is concealed, that means hidden, will be brought to light and made known to all. You better believe it. You better believe it. Because God is faithful to his word. But the thing is, see, you never know when it's going to come. You never know when it's going to come. Jacob didn't expect what he got from what he did. Laban didn't expect what he got from what he did. People who do things to them, you may not ever see what happens. But God fixes that thing. It's not for you to go start praying, Lord, get him, get him, get him. No, we have to move in love. And as, as the Spirit told me, Kim, just go ahead and speak to the man calmly, blah. You know, we have to still be an example, a light for others to see. So that they can grow. And we have to build one another up. Standing on our most holy faith. We can't have a form of godliness. Saying we are Christians. And then doing what we want to do. Not following the ways of God. Not following the ways of the king. The king is in control. And we have to follow the king's orders. And he sends the Holy Spirit to say order in the court. See, who knows? That could have happened to me for several reasons. But I got a testimony just like just like um Jacob. When I was younger, because I didn't always do what was right. When I was younger, I had sticky fingers. Sticky fingers, y'all know what that is? I would take little things from the store that didn't belong to me. My mom used to send this to the store, me and my sister. And then my sister said to me one day, let's take some candy. I was so scared that I didn't want to do it. But she coerced me. She said she she got me to do it. And we did it. And then I got comfortable with it. We just would do it sometimes when we went to the store for. And I got real comfortable with it. So I did it like it was nothing. So because it grows. Then one day I got caught. I got caught, y'all. I got caught. I didn't get caught the first time. I didn't get caught the second time. And as you continue to do things like the scripture said, you're going to prosper. It's going to grow. That seed is going to grow. But sooner or later, it comes crashing down on you. So yes, it's true. Cheaters never win. You can take my word for it. And guess what? Once again, it is review time. We are reviewing part two. Cheaters never win. And for this section of the review, we are doing true or false. So you can just put T or F into the comments and then I'll know you, you're ready with your answers. The first one states, cheaters always win. True or false? Absolutely false. <laughs> They never win. Don't get it twisted. Do not get it twisted. All right, number two. Things done in secret are eventually brought to the light. That is absolutely true. Remember we read in Luke 8, 17, for all that is secret will eventually be brought into the open. God's word never returns void. It is always true. And number three, punishment always comes at the very moment wrong action is taken. True or false? That is definitely not true. That's why everybody's not arrested when they do the crime. They got to be looking over their shoulders to see if the popo was coming. 
Because you never know when you're going to get caught. You never know when it's coming at you. You might not. You might think you're winning for a season. But eventually it's all going to come tumbling down on you. All right, we are moving into our final section, which is called staying faithful to the call. How do you stay faithful, everybody? We gave you those three points in the beginning. Remember, number one, you have to decide to be faithful to God's word. That means you need to read it. That means you need to know it. Secondly, you have to have a determination, determination to stay away from sin. Because if you're not determined, it's easy to fall because temptations come. Your friends are going to try to persuade you. Things are just going to be around that may, that that's going to cause you to, to be tempted. And number three, stay around people who will help you, who will help lift you up, who will support you and who you can support. That is, that is going to help you to overcome. That will help you to overcome. And then you too can be faithful to the call. But see, as I was talking about cheated earlier, it doesn't feel good to be cheated, does it? I'm not saying, even like Jacob, that anyone can relate to being cheated out of seven years of your life. Although someone may be able to. I don't know your story. But if you have a story, don't hide it. Use it for God's glory. But see, I'm sure that people get upset when they've been wronged, right? If someone tries to cheat you out of something, it causes people to get upset. Now, when I was cheated out of my money when I, when I had bought the car, I didn't get upset, but I was very disappointed. First of all, I was disappointed in myself for not paying closer attention on that paper the first time. But I, but God still turned it around for me. He still turned it around. See, God is faithful. Even when we're not. See, I was supposed to look better. I was supposed to look better. But God did it. He fought for me anyway. And see, cheating as we know, is it's the practice of deceit and trickery. You think you trying to trick some, you smarter than somebody else. You gonna trick somebody out of something. As we've heard in the story of Laban and Jacob. But the moral of the story is don't cheat. Do not cheat. Treat others how you want to be treated. Your friends, your parents, family, even your teachers. You think you smart enough cheating them out of thinking that you did this all this work yourself or that you doing better in the class. And let them have the, the experience of being able to feel good about themselves by you getting it the right way. They put in all that time and effort to help you grow. You know? But but like I said, it's not just about cheating. It's so much more than that. It goes farther than cheating. Try to demonstrate good behavior in everything we do. Try to demonstrate good behavior. Be an example and a light. Just like that picture we had. I'm going to put that picture back up again. You want to be the one that's shining. You don't want to be the one that is a form of godliness. That has no light. That is not drawing others. That is not lighting the way for others to see. You want to be connected to the right source. Because when you're connected, your light will shine. You will glow. But that, see, that's what Jesus did. But see, Satan operates in deception and lies. We know his purpose, and I'm going to keep on saying it so y'all will get it. It's to steal, kill, and destroy. That is his three purposes. So cheating is right up his alley. Right? Cheating is right up his alley. That's why he tries to keep you in the dark. That's why he works in darkness and not in light. See, his plots and schemes are revealed in the light. When you put God's light on it, when through see things through his perspective, his plots and schemes are revealed. God brings what's done in secret out into the light. Just like it was what, what happened for me when God looked, had me relook at my paperwork. Just like it was for Jacob. But God reveals that he protects his own. Don't you want to be on the winning side? Don't you want to be on the winning team? 
So yes, God protected Jacob's interests. He protected my interests. It's good when you know you have someone watching your back who knows and sees everything. He knows and sees everything. Because even though Jacob may have started wrong, he turned it. He turned that thing around. He followed the kingdom of God. He did things God's way. And yes, it came back to him eventually, but in the long run, God blessed him for his faithfulness. God blessed him, and he does what he does for each of us. He blesses us for our faithfulness. But we must be faithful to the call. And it is review time. <laughs> We're reviewing our last section, part three, stay faithful to the call. On this one, once again, we have a pop-up round. And in our pop-up realm, we just have two of them again. So the first one is, who is calling us to order? Order in the court. <laughs> who is calling us to order? Absolutely, the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to keep us in line, to help us to do right, to lead us in the goddess. He's saying order in the court. Because he too is God. He is God's spirit working and moving in and through us. And the second one is, the second question is, what is he calling us to? What is he calling us to? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. He is calling us to right living. He is calling us to right living. Well, that's our lesson for today. I hope you learned something new. But guess what? October's coming quickly. We're going to be in Youth Month. So make sure you stay um, in tune with every, all the flyers and everything that's going out because we want you to be a part on Zoom as we celebrate our Youth Month with our Global Kids. Have a great day. Be blessed. Love you. And let's review our memory verse one more time before we go. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. John 12, 24. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is salvation time this beautiful afternoon, this beautiful Sunday afternoon. And that means this is an opportunity for those of you all who are interested to become saved. So we're going to talk about Romans chapter 10, where it tells us that God's word is near to us. It's in our mouths and it's in our hearts. And through faith and belief that God is here to guide us on this earth, we are able to become saved. We can say, Lord, I want an op I want the opportunity to live right. I want the opportunity for you to give me, forgive me for anything that I may have done wrong. And I want you to be there right beside me as I live on this earth. And I decide that I want to be a person on this earth that is doing the right thing. I want to be a person on this earth that lives the way God wants me to live. So I ask that you forgive me of anything that I've done wrong. And I want you to welcome me into your family, God. So if you are that person who wants to be saved, you can repeat after me. And we're going to start with Romans chapter 10, verse 9, where it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you can say, I declare with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I am saved. I am saved. You know why? Because Romans chapter 9, chapter 10, verse 10 says, for it is with your heart 
that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess your faith and are saved. So that's what you have done today. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 tells us what to do when we want to be saved. We just have to say, I believe and I will say it out of my mouth. Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. So I am saved. So for all of you all who have said that scripture with me, we're going to go ahead and welcome you into the family of God. We thank you for being here with us this great, beautiful day. And we thank you for joining the family of Christ. You are amazing. You are great. And we pray that your life continues to get better and better and better. Peace be with you. Love be with you. Kindness be with you. Joy be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are saved. Welcome into the family of Christ. Amen.